This episode is brought to you by Grasshopper. Stay connected and run your business from your mobile phone with Grasshopper. To save $50 on your order, visit trygrasshopper.com slash TWIP. Today on TWIP Apps, the company that's been building things in HDR since before HDR was a thing, shows us Photomatics Pro, OneShot, and a brand new iOS app. HDR, or High Dynamic Range Photography, has been around for longer than you may realize, largely thanks to the engineering minds at HDR Soft. Before HDR evolved to what it is today, it started as simply tone mapping and the generating of 32-bit images in Photoshop. Today it's used for everything from landscapes to real estate, can be fantastical or practical, and can make the impossible real. The results are your dreams, and the software is Photomatix. I'm Photo Joseph, and this is TWIP Apps. Welcome to another episode of TWIP Apps. I'm your host, Photo Joseph, and today's guest is Ron Pepper, representing Photomatics. Ron, welcome to the show. Thank you. Greetings, Photo Joseph. <laughs> Thanks for coming on. So Ron is here to tell us a bit about Photomatics. And just so that we uh, get this out of the way up front, Ron, you're not an employee of Photomatics. Is that right? You're a professional photographer and you represent them? Right. Well, I'm a professional photographer. I specialize in panoramic photography, which I like to say makes me automatically an HDR photographer. Any panoramic <laughs> photographer needs it. So I've been using these the Photomatics nearly since it came out. And several years ago, I got involved just helping out uh, answering photography questions for the company and also to, um, helping with customer support. Anything from, hey, I lost my license, can you recover it for me, up to how do I use this thing and, uh, and how do I get better results, and all those kinds of questions. So they've been a really great client of mine for some time, and I am uh, become basically the representative because I love going out and talking about photography and just being in the, being in the, the in this, this group of photographers and getting to know everybody. So it, it's a perfect match. Nice. That sounds great. Very cool. So how many years uh, has it been? How, how old is the product? The product uh, was born in, I believe, 2002. And I okay. started using it a, probably a couple hours, a couple hours, a couple of, <laughs> uh, feels like a couple hours later, a couple of years later. Um, okay. After it was out of its infancy, I think. And then I've been working with the company just just through some communications. We, we were talking and they asked if I could come aboard and that was in about uh, late 08. So it's been quite a few years that I've been working okay. with them. And so you said 02. So Photomatics, the Photomatics HDR, this is an HDR app for anyone who's, who's unclear on that so far. Um, this was the first one was out in 2002? Well, that's my understanding. Uh, wow. It was around the time of Photoshop CS2. Okay. So, it, and I didn't realize we would talk too much history or math, but uh, <laughs> it was uh, soon after CS2 came out, there was a real demand for better tone mapping. And we're kind of skipping forward ahead on what HDR is, but sure. Photoshop CS2 gave the ability to combine images that were low dynamic range and combine them into a 32 bit file. And that's one step that non-photographers were using at the time but photographers like me said we want to use this this is a solution for me because i can't capture the whole dynamic range of a scene so we want to use this mm -hmm. and that's where the first product from photomatics came out as the photoshop plugin a tone mapping plugin and that was to give a better solution than photoshop interesting i, I was originally going to say that I didn't realize that this idea of HDR and tone wrapping had been around for that long, at least not on a consumer level. I'm you know, sure mm -hmm. in labs it's been around much longer than that. But as you were talking about it, I was thinking, I seem to recall seeing this high dynamic range image in Photoshop that someone demoed to me in an office somewhere years and years ago and would have been maybe around that time and just dragging Probably. a slider left to right. I think it was a a cathedral, a photo of the interior of a cathedral. So you had the really dark shadows and the really bright lights yeah. coming through the windows and just being blown away by what that was. That's really interesting. I wonder if it was from Photomatics, if it was their plug-in back in the day. It seems like every demo of HDR and or panoramic photography always used to be in cathedrals. And I always, we always <laughs> used to joke that these things work outside of churches as well. But you're prob probably what you were seeing was that in Photoshop, there's a slider when you have a 32 bit. So when you take a bunch of source images and you combine them, so you've taken 
let's just let's just do that little part of the intro now about what HDR sure. is. Yeah, go right ahead, please. Uh, so we can it'll make that other part a little more clear. So when you get into that situation where your camera can't capture all of the bright areas and all of the dark areas at the same time, then HDR is a great solution. So the a really good way to to describe it and partly because this is what I do a lot is think about an interior of a space. Say you're in a hotel room and you want to show you want to photograph the interior of this hotel room along with the beautiful view outside. Right. Well, most cameras can't do it. Well, no camera really can do that now. I think probably the future it will. So the traditional solution is to bring in a bunch of lighting, probably an, an assistant or two, block out the space all day, set up a bunch of lighting so that you're lighting the interior really well, and then you use the camera's exposure to capture that beautiful beach outside or whatever it is that you're showing. So you're taking one image by lighting the interior and then exposing for the exterior. So that's that's how it always has worked until HDR became one of the options in bracketing. So you use the camera's bracketing where you can set it up to take a series of different shutter speeds all the way from you know, the kind of the kind of situation I'm describing. I think most people watching this are photographers already, right? So certainly the so the kind of the situation I'm describing might have a, a one or two second exposure to capture the dark areas of the interior. And there might be a say one thousandth or two thousandth of a second exposure maybe for the exterior. So you take all those brackets, those extremes and everything in between, and I'll show you some samples here in a minute, that capture everything. Well mm -hmm. now you need some software to put it together. Because Prior to being able to do this in software, I don't know about you, but I spent a lot of time cutting out and using layer masks or before layer masks, sure. just erasing areas, putting one image on top of the other and erasing out the window. Yep, absolutely. And that can work, but then it's also a transition of the window area that that, that um, is not very smooth usually and takes some really high-end editing. Yeah, even so a, a hard edge window is not as easy as just using a lasso tool and straight line tool yeah. and cutting it out. It doesn't look right. Some some situations can be, but as we all know, every situation is different. And I remember yeah. having that situation where I thought I could solve it as a as a, a newbie. I thought I could solve it that way just by taking two shots, one for the inside and one for the outside. Mm -hmm. And then I realized that all of the area around the window was completely burned out as well. So I had no that was no solution for me. So if you take all the shots in between and you have a application like Photomatics Pro to put it together, then wow, it just changed changed what I did and, and what others that do do what I do. Absolutely. Do, so. Absolutely. Great. Well, we're going to get into the demo uh, pretty soon here. But before we do, just a couple other things about it. So the uh, we're going to be looking at a few different apps today, right? We're seeing Photomatics Pro, which is the big granddaddy, but we're going to look at a couple other things as well, right? Right, I wanted to show Photomatics Pro because like you say, that's the the big thing that HDR soft makes is Photomatics Pro. It's for people that are, well, it's for a few different kinds of photographers and we could talk about that a little bit down the road. Uh, but we have some new apps out as well that are more uh, consumer oriented and intended for uh, working with single images. Okay, great. Now you, you said the magic word, they're consumer oriented. So does that mean that the, the main one, Photomatics Pro, that is a professional app? Well, I tell you, it spans a great amount of a great uh, <laughs> wide uh, group of people okay. because there are certainly pros using it. Anything from um, architectural and real estate photographers that have the have a really good use for it. Um, almost all photographers that I've known over the years have, have used it in some way or another because it's a really a problem solving tool for those kinds of situations like I was describing, or maybe you're just a landscape photographer or a fine art photographer. There's really a lot of uses for it. Sure. Everything from those realistic architectural shots, uh, architecture and real estate, they want things to look realistic and real, real estate wants it to be realistic yet beautiful mm -hmm. and uh, all the way out to um, heavily heavy handed editing for artistic uses. So there's, a lot of people that use it and that to me i think it's mostly professional and prosumer you know serious amateurs uh, people that are just people that just get excited about the art and they want to try something new and, and have this tool that opens up a whole new world to them I, I, we get a lot of comments just unsolicited that's that write in and say 
in some way, you know, like a thanks or something along the line and just saying I've rediscovered or I've just I've jumped back into photography where I hadn't, it had gone away for a while or it's uh, in, just infused energy, a lot of things like that. So that's great. A lot of uses for it. So what is the price point then? Because that'll often determine who, who the market really is. Uh, Photomatics Pro is 99 Oh, well, in that case, it's pretty much for everybody. Yeah. And there's also, I don't think we're going to take time to show it today, but there's uh, Photomatics Essentials, which is very much the same underlying technologies and things. It's just made in a, a, for a, a bit of a simpler interface for people that okay. are new to HDR photography as 39. Okay, great. So a couple of different price points there. Awesome. Well, then I think it's uh, about time to jump into the demo. Before we do that, let's just take a quick break for a word from our sponsor. This episode is brought to you by Grasshopper. Grasshopper is a virtual phone system designed for entrepreneurs. Grasshopper works just like a traditional phone system, but requires no hardware purchase or software installation. With their iOS and Android app, callers can reach you wherever you are on your mobile phone. Grasshopper allows you to keep your existing number so you can maintain your brand. Or when you make a call, your client can see your Grasshopper caller ID instead of your personal phone number. Simply select a toll-free or local number, record a custom greeting, and add multiple extensions for your business. Toll-free numbers are great for marketing and make your business sound more professional. You can set up department and employee extensions with custom call forwarding to any phone in the world. You can get voicemails emailed to you as audio attachments. And you can also send and receive text messages from your business number. Join the over 250,000 Grasshopper customers today. Plans start at just $12 a month and you have a 30-day money-back guarantee. Turn your smartphone into a business line with Grasshopper. To save $50 on your order, go to trygrasshopper.com slash twip. That's trygrasshopper.com slash twip. And we thank Grasshopper for their support. And we're back with Ron Pepper representing Photomatic, so we can take a look at some really cool software here. You ready to show us what you got? Let's do that. And I'll start out by showing some, since we're just sitting in front of computers with a camera on us now, uh, we won't take any photos, but I'll show you an example of something like I was talking about earlier. I'll use this, these interior images here, where this is a, showing the, the exterior. So this is a little office building in San Francisco where they, where they rent office space out. Mm -hmm. And it's just really great to be downtown and you want to show what's outside and where you're at. So that was important to them. So I used bracketing to solve this problem so that I could show the exterior really well. And then I'm just going to thumb through these images and show as they, they brighten up and I'm just taking bracketed shots. So they're separated by one stop in shutter speed, Okay, each one. So by the end, I have it even a little overexposed for the darkest areas. Alrighty. And like where I started out where it's exposed well, or even a little underexposed for the brightest areas. So that's what bracketed images look like in case for anybody that was wondering what are you guys talking about? This is what bracketed images look like. And it just means that I put my camera on a tripod and I metered I literally, I put the camera in, in uh, spot meter mode, point it out the window, find out what shutter speed is appropriate after I've locked in the ISO and aperture. And then I do the same thing for the darkest spot in the room or in the, in the scene. And then I set my camera to capture those extremes plus everything in between. So are you doing that by, by just choosing an auto bracket and you're saying, give me a three stop or a five stop or seven stop auto bracket? Or is there something specific about from point A to point B with X number of stops in between? Well, I, the, the, way, the way the cameras are set up are going to be different enough where I can't really tell people how to set their camera. Sure. But what I can, what I can give a nice, here's a really good tip if you want to try bracketing. Go to hdrsoft.com slash EV, as in exposure value. And there is a there is a there is an exposure calculator there. And that will let you take it, it really helps to make clarify what's what's really going on there. You you key in what that brightest area metered at and what the darkest area metered at, and then it'll tell you exactly oh and you also input what capabilities your camera has for auto bracketing and it'll tell you how to set it oh interesting and uh, and if you're really serious about this kind of bracketing these kinds of scenes we did uh 
we did a short course at the TWIP school uh, and it has me capturing real estate shots and then processing them with, with what we're going to look at. So there's a, that'll be a deep demonstration and that's free over there. Okay. So the, what we'll show, I'm just going to show really quickly a little bit about Photomatics Pro here and then we'll move on to the the single shot apps. Okay, cool. Before we, I, I want to ask you something else about HDR. And this is one of the, I'm, I'm not a big HDR guys. Many of our listeners already know, uh, but I, I'm dabbling with it. And the more I play with it, the more I like it. But one of the things I've always wondered is, do you have to have fixed exposure brackets, i.e. one stop apart or one and a half stops apart across the entire thing? Or could you take, let's say three photos, one that's at minus three stops, one that's at minus two, and then another one that's at plus one, just because that's the way the scene really broke out and there's nothing in between. Is that okay? Or does the software really want to see that even those even steps? You know, when people say, well, that's a really good question. They, u- <laughs> they usually, they usually don't mean it. They usually think they're, they're trying to think of a way to get out of the question, but that is a good question. man. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> It doesn't matter, but don't do more spacing than two EV spacing between shots. Okay. Because two, according to the engineers, now this is where we were, we were talking about, hey, what do you do there? What's your title? And I said, I don't know, HDR Soft Insider is maybe. And the reason I sometimes I say that is that I have a direct line with the engineers and I can ask the engineering questions. Mm-hmm. And it's not the artistic questions or anything like that. And so what I understand is that most cameras, now the dynamic range of cameras is changing and improving. Sure. But if you go over two stops in spacing, you're really not going to have enough information in between to make a good file. Okay. I'm trying to use the terminology right without going into tangents. So if you if you take even spacing every two stops, great. If you want to go minus two, zero, and plus one for some reason, sure, go ahead and do that. Okay. Uh, not there's not too many reasons to do it I, that I can think of, but well, the reason people that it are doing up, all kinds of crazy things and getting good results, so I'm not going to tell anybody what yeah. not to do. <laughs> the reason that I that I even thought of that that even comes up in my head is because I I took a workshop once with a friend of mine, Sean Bagshaw, who's a, a really amazing landscape photographer, and he doesn't do HDR, but he does. Um, no, I'm completely forgetting the name. The uh, masking, the luminous, luminosity masking. Yeah. He does luminosity masking, all done by hand. And so mm-hmm. when he shoots, he doesn't just bracket three stops, five stops, seven stops, whatever. He will, like you were saying about spot metering through the window, spot meter the interior. He'll spot meter, okay, there's that out of the lake, there's the mountain range, there's the sky. And he'll make sure that he has a perfect exposure for the three, four, five elements in the scene that he's going to care to blend together. And that's mm-hmm. what he then brushes back and forth using the luminosity masks. So. Right. D- taking that approach so then it might not be an even one or two steps it stops it might be one and a third and then this one's two and a half whatever yeah. it's uh, it's all over the place yeah he's he's taking it a whole other level yeah absolutely it's really taking control but at the same time i don't see why why you would need to really take those specific me- uh, readings because i can just bracket half a stop one stop two stops and i can have it all and so if I have time in the scene to really take it to that detail and specific, very deliberately shoot exactly this way because I know how I'm going to process and that's what he's doing and mm-hmm. I'm sure he's great at it, fine. But why not just go ahead and capture seven stops and then you have them and you might be able to throw some away. I think and that's, I, and that's just because, but that's, that's me because I'm always in a situation where I have to shoot quickly and get in and get out. Hmm. So I'll even do things like the ones I just showed where I was just thumbing through. I actually overshot it. Mm-hmm. There's there's um, underexposure in the in the the dark in the the brightest and vice versa because I was in there and I I had set my bracketing settings in my camera and I had so many scenes and so many rooms to shoot in only a certain amount of time and this is really common. This was a office space with a lot of offices to to rent and it was just brand new and there's nobody in. There was only a couple of them occupied and I had so many to shoot. And that happened. The same thing happens with real estate photographers. There's going to be people in here looking at it in 30 minutes and I've got to shoot, you know, seven yeah, scenes or something like that. So I'll, I'll do that. I'll cheat and I'll just set my camera to over bracket. And right. I know I've got more than I need, but, and I know it's going to cost me some time later in organizing, but it's my solution for that situation. And I just want to kind of push home that, that this is a tool and a solution for a lot of situations, not everyone. Not every solution. I've got 
there's a lot of scenes where I'll have like bracketing itis or something where I feel like I need <laughs> to bracket here where I really don't. And, and even before that, and uh, my tangent will end in a second. The, the, even before that, when I really first discovered HDR, and that, again, it was a solution for my panoramic work, and that was uh, client work. But I still took my camera everywhere. I still take my camera everywhere, of course, and I would just bracket everything thinking that that was going to make it a better photo. And that's not necessarily true. Right. It right. needs to be deliberately used. So don't think it's going to replace anything. Like it, it can improve. It can improve your situation if the problem is bad light difficult light mm -hmm. those are things that it can really help you with it's not going to help you with composition or, of course <laughs> uh, or just having just having um uh, a bad if the shot's not there it might not be there <laughs> right right fair enough yeah. okay all right great thank you uh, it's just it's a bit of a tangent but it's one of those questions and uh, if i have it then odds are somebody else who's uh, who's watching or listening has it absolutely so. Absolutely. All right. Well, let me we show you how to, to put demo? that together. All right. Let's take a look. I just switched over here to the opening screen in Photomatics Pro. And I'm going to click bracketed photo, load bracketed photos. And let's load those ones that we just looked at. That was called text space here. And I'm just grabbing all of them. In fact, as I mentioned, I, I know I overshot it. I can even just drop a couple of them. But that's a completely up to you and how you want to use it. Right here it says show 32-bit processed image. I'm only going to do this to explain really quickly what we're doing, uh, which I'll mention in a second. I don't need to align the source images because they're shot on a solid tripod. But if I, you can hand hold these images, maybe not these because again, there were long exposures of a couple of seconds, so those are not hand holdable. But if you're outside and you're taking brackets that are faster shutter speeds it's no problem to handhold as long as you don't move the camera greatly sure then the software these days is, is so mature that it's going to be able to align them okay great and ghosting that's when there's movement within the scene which there's not i reduced noise because i converted these from raw to tiff already and the same with the chromatic aberration so i don't need to apply those so when i click merge to hdr it's creating a 32-bit file and that's actually what an HDR file is. Uh, if you see an image on a screen, technically speaking, it's not HDR. It can't be because you cannot view an HDR image on a screen. You can't print it. Hmm. So th in fact, that's the reason this next step, tone mapping, became needed. So what we're seeing here, this is not really a preview. This is just a the best representation it can really make with a 32-bit file. It's just a whole bunch of lighting data. We need to make it into an image. So the way our Skype screen is here, I'm missing my, my buttons on the screen, but I can hit Command T to go to tone mapping. And normally you could click the tone mapping button. So this is uh, what it first comes out with. This is based on actually the settings that I had used previously for a different image. So what I'd like to do instead is go to um, default setting. So you're just going to default setting for the most commonly used process in Photomatics Pro. So this is taking that 32-bit file I mentioned, and it's reducing the contrast. So think about the histogram. Here's a regular histogram. But if you imagine a 32-bit histogram would be much wider. Okay. There would be information several stops to either side. And the whole idea here of using tone mapping or exposure fusion, which I highly recommend right here up in the upper left, mm -hmm. is to reduce that histogram down into a regular histogram so you can see it on a screen or you can print it on paper. Okay. So that's that's kind of, it's kind of a two-step process. You create that 32-bit image or file, image file. And as you alluded to really quickly, Joseph, earlier was before photographers were using it, it was for really 3D artists that were using these 32-bit files. Mm. So we're reducing it down into a photograph again. Thanks to those guys that use Maya and those kinds of things, they kind of pushed it forward. And then once photographers discovered it, we wanted that. And this is a great solution we have for it. Got it. So here's, um, I don't want to go too much more into Photomatics Pro because People that are really serious about it, again, can go over and look at that uh, TWIP school um, that we did to really get 
really good details about it. But this is this is historically where this company comes from, is doing HDR software. But I will point out still, exposure fusion. The one of the most common things, people love tone mapping because you get kind of you can get these crazy looks. People mm -hmm. really like it. And you can hear from a tone of voice, I'm not judging. <laughs> <laughs> okay? Because there's beautiful art going on. Now I could I could use these presets and go, whoa, okay, that's not what I'm after. But what we're seeing here is a lot of different types of methods being applied to that 32-bit file I mentioned. And so with tone mapping, I can click onto contrast optimizer, and that's a newer, that's one of the newer um, methods that we have that was new in uh, version five. And it's easier to get realistic results quickly. But for these interiors, I can click to, I can switch to exposure fusion. And for this interior, I can use fusion interior. And it really keeps it realistic while still showing the view outside the window. Hmm. That's always been a, that's always been a big challenge. Sure. Is, you, you, we don't really realize it when we use our eyes, but an interior with a, with a view is actually the, the hardest to photograph in my opinion. So that's just some, so I'm just um, showing some, there we go, bringing up the shadows a little bit and we can bring down the highlights outside. So you can get a you know very close to being finished image right out of Exposure Fusion. Um, I like to do a little bit of post-processing when I do these kinds of things with clients. I'll, I'll, I'll do a little bit of work in I, I use Lightroom a lot, and I'll I'll do a, some black slider, some contrast, maybe a tone curve. That's usually all I need after using Photomatix Pro. Sometimes I don't even need to do that actually. Hmm. Okay. So there's a super quick demo of Photomatix Pro. Alrighty. Unless you can think of anything Pretty else. Pretty straightforward. I no, I mean, it's it, it's straightforward. It uh, like we say, it does what it says on the tin. Um, the yeah. the two different I, modes, the tone mapping versus exposure or fusion. That's that's interesting to see, and I don't think that's at least it's not a phrasing that I've seen show up in apps before. And uh, it'll be good to. It's the kind of thing you really I think you need to play with and see what is going to look better for your particular photo that you're throwing at it. Right. That's the that's probably the best way to get to know what this what it can do. Right. Number one is to focus on the actual capturing of the images because you know getting good a good capture is going to allow you to get best results not not a big surprise you know one of the biggest one, one well one i'd say common question i get is hey i took my three shots how come i'm not getting good results mm. and the answer is that three shots may or may not be enough because in a scene like this it's not it right. really can't be right absolutely where a lot of exterior scenes where the dynamic range is greater than the camera can capture but still not so great then that common three shot method then it can be enough gotcha and the other thing I've been finding is that people might be expecting to do a little too much where if I, if I overuse this and I get, yeah. I get kind of a flat result, mm -hmm. something maybe like this. Remember what I said about taking that really wide 32-bit histogram and crunching it down into an 8-bit hist hist histogram. So what we're really doing is reducing contrast in a high contrast scene. So if you think of it that way, the tone mapping tool has actually done its job too well here. Right. Because it's really become a flat photo with no contrast. And this is one of those learning curves I went through is to really to remember the basics. A good photograph has shadows. Sure. What is it? Uh, this, uh, what is the Rick Salmonism, the light? illuminates and shadows define is, is that mm. is, i think Some, that's what he says something like that yeah so with, without shadows you don't have a good looking attractive photograph right so one of the ways i've used photomatics is I'll, I'll go ahead and take a result similar to what you see there where it's it's very quite flat because what i've done is given myself all of the information i've got yes it's flat but i can go ahead and use contrast in fact i can even apply those settings here and get a very simple post-processing uh, window. Now, this process, this post-processing window is more for, it's not up yet, there it is. It's more for people who are not going to go out and post-process in um, Photoshop or, or some anything other else, yeah. editing app. But I can go ahead and re-add contrast right here hmm. just to bring it back into being more photographic now those these tools are, are simple 
but and you can have a lot more control in, in other apps that you're more comfortable with. But already right there, I think for its purposes, I'm not far off here for what what they're using sure. this, um, this image for. Okay. So it, um, I like to point that out that it depends on the workflow. Your workflow will influence how you use Photomatics Pro. Right. right. Makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Um, now, yeah, I'm time to move on. <laughs> yeah, so, so you wanted to show us a, a plugin that works out of photos, right? Right. It's also it is it does work as a standalone app as well, uh, but it it says it and it will be soon a standalone app for Windows. But right now it's a standalone app and or an extension for Apple Photos. And this is um, a lot of people tell us they're using Photomatics for single images. Photomatics Pro or Photomatics Essentials, or a lot of people are taking um, a single image, uh, hopefully a raw image, has a little more information in it, of course, but people want to use this on single images. Plus, Photos does not allow any exporting of multiple photos, right. so you can't do things like stitching or HDR out of photos at this point. Right. So uh, HDR stuff created Photomatics OneShot, and again, you can use it as a, as a standalone, but since we're sitting here in Photos, so that you can, I can look at the brackets. Um, we'll, we'll use that. And let's say I had just taken one image of this alleyway. So here's a handheld shot, actually, where walking around. This is downtown New York, walking around, and it was literally a snapshot. It's one reason I like to use this as a demo. I was walking along. <laughs> it's a snapshot. I looked in the alleyway, and I bracketed the heck out of it, and I didn't use a tripod or anything. Okay. So. If I wanted to use one of these images, it's a pretty good for this demo for that. And when you edit in photos, you can add, you can use these extensions to make it more powerful. And so that most for me, that's mostly Affinity Pro. But Photomatics One Shot will give us very similar tools to what we saw in Photomatics Pro. Do you know what file format it's sending over? If it's rendering out a TIFF or JPEG to send over there? You know what? I have... Um, you set that in photos, I believe. Oops. What did I do? I'm not sure. Are you seeing my screen right now? Yeah. I, it's not up on, on the screen. I'm waiting for you to get that up. There we go. I'll go ahead and run it again. Um, okay. Yeah, I don't recall if in photos you can set it. I don't think you do. I kind of think it's something that has to be set by the host app, hard coded in. But I, I could be wrong on that. It's funny because I'm I'm still coming from Aperture, really. <laughs> hey, where, you too. Uh, huh? <laughs> where there was <laughs> not not as a heavy user. <clears throat> excuse me. In my <clears throat> pardon me. Not as a heavy user, but as someone who needed to support the plugin. <laughs> gotcha. So uh, hold on. Let me, let me. I'm just exiting out of full screen because I'm not getting. Um, not getting what I'm used to seeing here. Well, well, I'll, I'll, that was I'll, I'll that was you that was heavily here. into Aperture, right? Right. Yeah, I ran the website ApertureExpert.com. Right. 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 Okay. Um, okay. So now it's working. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I so think just I, I went out of full screen. I'm just uh, I'm missing a couple of controls in full screen. Okay. Just say. The, um, just say we've come out of full screen. I'm going to go back to the image and then say we've come out of full screen and that'll be my edit point. Okay. Okay, so we've come out of full screen. All right, so what are we, we're now in the plugin in Photomatics one shot from within photos. Right, and in, in, in photos they call it an extension. Right. And now we're able to apply the same kind of power of tone mapping to a single image. And there's a lot of times where that is really helpful. So even though I'm not going to recover everything out of these highlights up here, that's something that you really need true HDR to do in bracketing. But I can get a great deal from this image where here's the original. And here, when I opened it up, this is the default that I got. I so I can, again, recover just boosting those shadows with one click, with, with one... Right. motion and it's using a, kind of the unique ways that photomatics does that and so adding all this freedom to adding all this freedom to a single image can be really powerful 
Uh, I'm just going to choose one of the presets first on the right. So I'll use the balance preset. And then I can see the adjustments as well. Mm, okay. So it doesn't, I don't have to use just the, the presets. I can still add sure. my own. Now, I wonder if yeah. if the plugin, if it's not doing it now, and it doesn't look like it is because of the, the clouds that we're seeing and how blown out they are, but if the plugin yeah. could be modified to pull in the raw file, because there are extensions, plugins now for photos that will grab the raw file. That there's That's yeah. now part of the API that photos can send the raw file out to another app which would of course allow you to do a lot more even hdr level from a single photo as we know depending on how wide the range goes you can do some level of hdr ish type stuff from a single raw file well it it will do that of course and it will use the raw processor of apple but once it's once it's been rendered into a non-raw image it's not a raw image anymore so right no but i'm saying that it, there are there are plugins there are extensions that will load the raw image that can pull that mm -hmm. from photos. So that's something for the engineers to look at if there's a way, and maybe that's something they're already working on, but a way to uh, for yeah. them to pull that in. Because that would, of course, give you more more options, more flexibility here. And it could be that it could be that's something that I didn't understand, but it's uh, I, I don't believe we're look, still working with a raw image now. I don't think so. At this stage, right. But there are, a 16-bit TIFF has a great deal of information still. Yes. And with a lot of my side-by-side trying and testing i think i can't really i can rarely tell the difference right and that was that was hence my question earlier of is it sending a tiff or is it sending a jpeg over yeah uh this particular image i had already saved it as a jpeg so that's what we're working with here okay so in fact that's not a bad that's a good point to make is that everything that we're boosting is coming out of a jpeg image which to me ain't natural <laughs> it seems like <laughs> something that uh, that's we've already thrown away so much information for to the jpeg that right. i'm i've really changed the things that i say about jpegs over the last say year because i've been seeing the, these things people always told me do. oh i can use a single image and do this and i know you can't no you can't you can do a lot more <laughs> okay um uh, really quickly in in photomatics one shot you also have a uh, very powerful um, noise reduction okay. built in. That's kind of a neat thing that a lot of times you're, you're buying plugins for noise reduction, and this is that's built in, and it's a it's a good one. They uh, and that's probably more necessary when you're using it as a standalone than an extension because theoretically uh, the, the that raw process will include the noise reduction. Right. But but again, it depends on how you're using it. Um, we have some of the same um, contrast tools. Just to, I like to add, I like the, I like this image with some dark lines. Sure. Those, those uh, two outside lines like that. So, yep. There's a million things you could do with it. Um, okay. Try it out. Very good. <laughs> and where is this available? Is this on the App Store? This is on the App Store. Uh, nine ninety nine. Nine ninety nine. Excellent. Yeah. All and right. you can any of these. I believe one shot is on the App Store only. Uh, the other ones are all downloadable from hdrsoft.com and click on downloads. Okay. And um, it, they all run in trial mode. Okay, great. All right. And I know you had uh, one more app you wanted to show us. Yes. So similar to one shot that we were just looking at, we have, uh, there is an iOS app about to come out called Photomatics Effects. Excellent. And... I believe I'm switching over to my iPhone here. There it is. There's my mountain of apps. <laughs> there we go. But if I, oh, I should show the icon there, I guess. So down here, there's uh, on the near the bottom right there, there's the, the orange one. Yep. effects. <laughs> That's a beta app. It is a beta app. This will be out um, by the time anybody sees this, but I'm using a beta right now. Of course. Um, free to download. There is an in-app purchase I'll point out here in a minute. Okay. So similar to what we just saw on the one shot, we're really applying effects to single images here. Mm -hmm. So we're not truly working with high dynamic range. We're just applying these tools that we find out are really 
useful on single images kind of to to those of us purists a little surprising i guess but <laughs> um, in playing in using this app it's it's been really fun you know it's um you're really able to take advantage of of these um kind of powerful tools that are only available from photomatics and you can do them with one tap if you want um, of course you can take a little farther so let me just uh grab an image i just have a few i added to this demo section here and what i've done is try to get a couple of different different kinds of images to show um, some of them are just casual and silly like it's halloween time for when we're recording this it's almost halloween time so here's just my silly shot my son loves any kind of a ball so i had to get a shot of these eyeballs <laughs> and and i just thought you know here's the iphone shot and, and i love the iphone camera i mean i've been a photographer for a long time but i'm amazed what the iphone can do yeah it is remarkable and so you know in the right conditions it's a great camera right mm -hmm. um, so it's a cute shot okay there you go big deal um, but let's add some effects to it and make it more halloween i can go really crazy if i want to so with one tap, I can kind of get this um, over-the-top Halloween look. Mm -hmm. And if there's, if there's one place where I think over-the-top editing <laughs> is useful, this is the kind of image that, that I would do where I would probably do that myself. <clears throat> now, you don't have to just take what these presets give you. And by the way, if I tap one preset i'm not adding to what i've done before i'm just i'm i'm taking sure it's starting from the original image oops that's not the original image it's starting from the original and it's adding right those settings it's new right? new preset yeah so down at the bottom right here i can click on adjust effect and then i get some some extra uh, controls the in-app purchase you can't see it here because i paid for it Yes, okay. I did. I paid for it. <laughs> the one, one ninety nine for the strength slider. So you can use everything we're going to do for the moment, and I'll show you the strength slider. And well, I can show you it now. I can just what I'm doing is I'm dragging right on the image right now. Can't mm -hmm. see my finger, but you can see the slider. Mm -hmm. I'm just dragging on the image, and there's also some presets. That you and can that see just backs off on up. the strength of that preset. Yeah, on the on the strength of everything that's applied. The, yeah, the preset everything. is a, okay. a group of settings, and it's just reducing, kind of like reducing the opacity layer okay. if you will Got on it. Uh, if you've applied a bunch of things on a photoshop layer great so if i want to add and i'll move on here in a sec if i want to add a little more contrast and change the saturation maybe make it almost black and white kind of creepy mm -hmm. cool almost black and white for halloween or something like that and we'll we'll crop away the we'll crop away get a better line okay so you see what i you see where i'm going sure and then if I want to just reduce the strength of it, then that's the only thing that is um, something you pay for. So if you like the app and you want to control the strength of what you're applying to it, that's then that's a okay. one ninety nine in-app purchase. Great. And up on top here, there's this um, just clicking on the original Before versus after. what I've done with it. So again, a fun image you might um, you know send your send your kids. Look what I'm looking at. <laughs> so let's yep. go out of there and look at where you might use it for the serious photography iphone or not um now can this app bring in a raw file since ios 10 allows that you know boy we sh i should have i wish i'd uh, asked talked about this prior um i just got my iphone 7 and I have not, and the new iOS, and I have not played with the raw okay. files in it. Have, have you? Oh yeah. Because, yeah, I have not had time to really take advantage of that yet. Um, since I carry around my Olympus all the time, I always have raw files, but uh, sure. and I haven't tried it, but. Yeah, well you can, with these iOS apps that will read a raw file, you can both shoot raw on your iPhone 7 if you have, or 6S and above, but you can also yeah. edit a raw file that has been imported or just synced via photos. So if you were to shoot with your Olympus and either import using the camera card reader and import the raw file, or just you've imported to photos on your desktop and now it's synced back to your iOS device, you can access that raw file from within some iOS apps and actually decode the raw file. Right. Yeah, this one, I would know if it did uh, work with raw files. Okay. Uh, currently, no. And uh, that's one of those things where uh, 
I was all, I'm all excited to get raw files from my iPhone and I still haven't uh, taken the time to <laughs> taken the time off of sure. um, flag football games and, <laughs> uh, and uh, school dances to, to try that. So, uh, but the app, no, it's working on a single uh, JPEG okay. at this stage. And, uh, but you know, we're on a beta right now and version one is ready to be released now. Um, Apple's approved it. And so by the time you're seeing this, that'll be out okay. there. So we'll, we'll see what it, what it, um, grows into. Great. But if I take a, an image like this, where maybe a throwaway image, I'm just on a photo walk in San Francisco, which is a regular occurrence for me. And, um, I might play with it and see if I want to make it into something stronger. Mm -hmm. So like for here, I've just clicked on enhanced and I've got like a grayer image, but I've brought back a lot of detail. Yeah. And if I go down here to my adjustments and start getting into some contrast adjustments and color, I played with this the other day and I thought I got kind of a neat image out of it. Um, oops, I'm still in contrast. I meant to go into saturation, bring some of that kind of warmth out of the foreground there and play with, see if I like something else. Sure. Yeah. Cool. Um, and um, start bringing in details in the sky. So it's one of those images where I probably wouldn't have done anything with it until I really played with it in, in effects. And um, there's something that while I'm on a photo walk, instead of doing nothing with it, maybe that goes on to Instagram. Sure. Okay. So that's, a, I think, a good use for it is just kind of make something that, that wasn't there before. So there's, if I tap this on the top, there's my original kind of boring. Mm -hmm. And there's um, with some with some pop. Yeah, pretty good improvement. Uh, she said this, the app yeah. is free and the in-app purchase for the slider bar for the adjustment uh, intensity bar was how much? Uh, 199, 199 for, for the, the purchase. strength slider. All right. Which actually, when I was just playing with that one, I didn't even use that. Right, you did not. Um, if you if you get some epic landscapes, you know, maybe nice. one one click for for That's some pretty pop. Pretty good. Yeah. Um, you can you can go again. I'll say it. You can go too far. <laughs> yes, you can. Um, those halo things are only a problem if you're living in the past. <laughs> <laughs> Email me support at hdrsoft.com if you're getting halos, and I'll help you out. Okay. Um, and then, of course, I should mention the whole. Really, the idea here is for sharing. Right. That's what I think. That's what Photomatic's effects on an iOS device is really for. There's, I don't know about you, Joseph, and all the viewers, <laughs> listeners out there, but we go through this this change where. I've gone through the, this change where I realized that a lot of photography is for social sharing mm -hmm. and it's not supposed to be for my clients. Yeah, absolutely. And man, that made, that freed me up to have a lot of fun. Good. So I started getting into Instagram. I started sharing a lot more without worrying about, oh my God, I can't show this. I can't show this because right. it's not something. Yeah. And so um, there's something where, in, in, in fact, maybe it's a good time to mention, we started our own Instagram feed uh, barely started it and i think i'm going to be main one in charge of that so that should be fun um uh, photomatics underscore official okay uh, check it out no uh, we should have some content on there by the time this is uh this is up this is seen and if you're uh want to if you want to share some images on there and we can uh feature those using any of the uh, photomatics family of apps then um by all means uh send that over cool very good. We'll uh, we'll have that up when we do the social media thing. We'll put it up on the uh, on the screen for Sounds people. I was just logging Sounds into the good. Instagram account here to see if there's nope, nothing there yet. All right, totally empty. No, as of today, yeah, I could uh, definitely confirm that. Okay, you can. Uh, I, I've I've um I'll start posting some from this app as well. I'm R Pepper. Okay, and I'll start posting some from this app as this, I really wanted to wait until it's officially released yeah. because now it won't make sense to most people. So. I got gotcha. you. All right. Well, thank you. We're uh, we're running a little tight on time here, so let's uh, let's wrap this up. There's some great apps in there, great tools. Um, thank you very much for showing all that to us. So we, before we let you go, we do have a last section of the show that is the guest app pick, and this is where you, the guest, get to tell us what your favorite app is. And of course, it cannot be from the company that you're representing. So, outside of the good stuff from Photomatics, what uh, what is your favorite app? Well. The one I've discovered pretty recently is called Photo Pills. So it's, I guess it means pills as in the pills you take, medi like medicine <laughs> pills, I'm not sure. But it, Photo Pills, all one word, 
And uh, actually, I can point it out since I have my, uh, I'm already sharing my iPhone here. Oh, sure. Go ahead. Um, if you look right in the, in the right smack in the middle, there you, you see go. photo pills is the, the yellow icon. And man, I've just started discovering this because I've been doing here in San Francisco. I've been um, meeting up with a photography group once a month to do full moon photography. And it's been a lot of fun. And we've all been comparing apps that we use for planning. And so I could just click on the moon planner, but on the top left here, there's the just says planner. And <laughs> it's amazing how <laughs> if you're new to this kind of photography, it's not going to feel amazing. But to do what this app can do would have taken maps and compasses mm -hmm. and I think topographical maps and everything to figure out where you're going to find the sun and the moon at the right time to to get a good foreground, for instance. And so and this one will tell you the moonrise, the moon, the sun, the, the moonset, the sunrise, the sunset. But it also has all of these tools like depth of field calculator, hyperfocal distance table, which is something near and dear to me. Part of what I do is something where I need everything in focus. Mm. And so I have this hyperfocal table for any new lens situation I get. And it, it does, it gets really, really nerdy, really <laughs> math oriented. <laughs> but it also allows you just to, I can go to the moon and find out the details of when and where or when I need to be. And then I can even use this AR button on the bottom, the very bottom middle, and it gives you this augmented reality and you can see my, my messy <laughs> computer desk here, but it, I can look, I can move around and see where the moon is. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to get out of that because that's just ugly. The, I can see where the moon is coming in real time yeah. and I can see it while it's below the horizon and I can wait for it and I can see that it's going to be above like the Transamerica Tower right. or... That's great. I'm going to miss it that day. It's not the right day. It, it's amazing. Um, yeah, those kind of planning I tools I, are great. And I know someone who told me about this one before, and I think I had forgotten the name of it. So now that I've seen it, I, I, I know this yeah. is absolutely what they'd shown me. So I'll have to check this one out again. This is one of those. I think it's like a $10 app. So it's not a, you know, as apps go, it's it's not a cheap one, but it does a ton. Yeah. And if I, if I say something, if I have anything negative to say about it, it's just, it has that kind of Photoshop-esque confusion about it when you first get in mm, there. You go, sure. oh my gosh, a lot of I, stuff. where am I? What am I doing? But when you spend some time with it, it's really powerful. And I, I, I believe it's just a small group of guys in Spain that have created this thing. I and think so we'll have I'm to reach also, out to them and see if uh, we can get them on the show because it's, it's a deep yeah, app, as I you say. It'd be worth that. having them on here. Super. Yeah. Right on. Thanks. Well, thank you again, Ron. I appreciate all that. Why don't you uh, tell our audience where they can find you guys? I know you had another shout out of a, a learning course that you wanted to call out here on the show as well. Oh, yeah. It was when you asked earlier, I was um, going to say we've been putting together content on photofocus.com hmm. and there's an HDR learning center there. Okay. And, um, I've contributed a couple of things, but there's a whole bunch of contributors to that website and there's a lot of written content. There's a lot of hangouts that are a, a bit like we're doing here with a lot of screen sharing um, Great. a lot if you're if you're interested in getting in that and uh just the hdrsoft.com website has a ton of information um, it's uh if you're have questions about it the faqs frankly you know not the not the boring stuff like licensing and stuff right. but the the tips and tricks section is, um, is amazing it'll let you hit the ground running if you're if you maybe you've either never tried it before or you tried it and didn't get good results and kind of forgot about it okay. if you go back and get follow some of those tips and tricks there and again you're welcome to email and i'll point you in the right direction cool. maybe we can get you to do a post or two on the photoops.expert website and get some education from you on there yeah sounds good to me very cool right on well thank you again ron for coming on so um, where do people go to download all these delicious apps yeah go I would suggest anybody you can uh, to do that that is in any level of interest. Uh, go to hdrsoft.com. There's a download link on the top. And all of the apps, uh, I think with the exception of OneShot, is available. You can just download it, and it works in a fully functional trial. adds a watermark, but there's no 30-day limitation or anything. It's, it, it'll let you try out everything. Okay. And again, the, the, the website has really great information about how to capture, as well as... Uh, what I mentioned on the TWIP school has a lot of good information on how to capture cool. photo focus. I've done a few posts on how to capture. So those two things together, Very good. capturing to get some, full, cover the full dynamic range and then just try it out on the app and, and see how you like it. 
Okay, great. And the TWIP school stuff that is on thisweekinphoto.com, just click on the uh, TWIP school button and that'll take you there. Um, I think most people, most people watching this know about the TWIP school, I think. Probably, <laughs> probably. All righty. Very good run. Well, thanks again. I appreciate it. Thanks for coming on and uh, best of luck to you out there. This is uh, some, some great software and it's uh, quite, quite the legacy to it. It's kind of cool that it's been around for so long and, and maturing for so many years. Yeah, I'd wonder what I wonder what would have happened if uh, the the genius didn't start this back in O two. <laughs> <laughs> Where enough. would we be? Where would we be? All righty, take care, Ron. Thank you very much. Thank thank you, Photo Joseph. All right, <laughs> bye bye. So there we have it from HDR Soft, the Photomatix Pro. That is, it's robust HDR software, and it's it's a very simplified interface. I was a little surprised getting into it at how uh, straightforward it was. You know, we're used to seeing f HDR apps that have tons and tons of buttons and dials and, and knobs and things that you can twist and change the image. And it seems that this app is really more designed towards making a very pure HDR image, true to the name of, of high dynamic range and not about the special effect kind of thing, which is great. And that certainly has a, a great place in the market, um, especially things like the real estate that we saw in there. It, when you're doing real estate, you don't want to mess around. You're not trying to get fancy. You're just trying to get the job done and get a high quality image out. So I can certainly appreciate that there. Seeing the other smaller apps in there, especially the ones for iOS are fun, definitely neat to see. I would love to see that doing raw. So we're not sure if it's doing it yet, but hopefully that will happen if it isn't going to happen on launch because now with iOS 10 and the ability to access those raw files means that you can truly generate an HDR like image really pull a lot more out of a single image but you do need that raw file to start with to do that taking it from a JPEG as we saw you can do a little bit to it but if you could access the raw file you'd be able to do a lot more so hopefully we'll see that uh, that coming in the future if it isn't already there. So other than that, I think that's about it. We've seen quite a bit about these tools. As uh, as the man said, head over to their website and you can download a free trial. And it's uh, very inexpensive at $99. That is a bargain for some really truly high-end HDR software. So I encourage you guys to check that one out. So that does bring us to the end of another episode of TWIP Apps. I'm your host, Photo Joseph, and you can find me on the socials at Photo Joseph, as well as on my website at photoapps.expert. Special thanks to our sponsor. Thank you very much. Without you, we couldn't do what we do here. Be sure to follow us on Twitter and on Facebook and visit our website at thisweekinphoto.com where you can sign up for our email list to be notified of new episodes and to get exclusive subscriber bonuses. If you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to comment, like, and subscribe. And if you're watching on our website, you can subscribe to the show using the box on this page. If you have feedback, suggestions, or comments about this show, you can reach me, Photo Joseph, directly by using our contact form. Just click on the Contact Us menu item at the top of the webpage. And finally, if you're a developer and you have an app that you would like to show us here on the Twip App Show, click that same Contact Us button at thisweekinphoto.com and let us know what you've got. And with that, it's time to put that lens cap back on and go edit some photos. <laughs> <laughs>